Renovating to sell? Find out how that works in a changing market in today's Real Talk. Today we have the wonderful Anita McGowan. Anita, thank you for coming on the show. It's my pleasure. Anita, you came into real estate with a background in design and uh, project coordination. Uh, How has that helped you so far in your real estate career? Well, it's been a tremendous help um, going into houses and having experience about the construction of a house and also having a passion for architecture and design helps me when I'm working with clients, particularly when they're asking me about what renovations they should do that might maximize their profits. And typically, that's a tough question to answer, but typically when you're going through someone's house and they're consulting you, maybe they're getting ready to sell or just looking to improve their house and make the most of their buck, what's your general advice? Is it putting more money to the kitchens, the bathrooms, the backyard? Uh, Where do you generally see the best uh, return on investment? So when I first meet with someone, I ask them what their time horizon is regarding when they're going to sell. So if you have um, a few months to sell, then the decision making is a little different. It also depends on the area and um, the type of house. So in some areas, putting money into the kitchen Um, may be warranted, but it's a four to six month project and it's a very expensive um, endeavor. It's important also to remember when you're doing a renovation to sell, you're looking at general appeal. So it's not necessarily for your taste, it's for the broader taste to maximize your profits. So I look at each house individually and their time horizon and then um, we discussed we discuss budget and potential return. And when you're talking timeline, like four to six months, uh, obviously during COVID there was a big delay. It's tough to get labor because you, you might have outbreaks at certain companies with contractors or just supply issue shortages. Are you still dealing with the, the effects of COVID on the supply chain? Um, there are still some issues that um, we're experiencing, particularly with appliances. It's very difficult. There's a backlog with appliances. Um, production of tile was a real issue due to labor and uh, supply. Uh, outbreaks in China, where a lot of the materials are coming, um, delayed. Uh, materials. We're finding a little bit um, of uh, an improvement with uh, products. So what I would instruct my clients to do um, on the project management side is once uh, we made decisions regarding materials to get them on site as soon as possible. Previously we would have them delivered just in time for the trades but because of difficulties with supply Um, There was a real issue with bathtubs, strangely enough. I didn't hear that. Yeah, so bathtubs were, you could, if you left a bathtub in um, some of the supply um, stores, it would be gone. So as soon as the bathtub came in, you had to pick it up. I did not know that, that's funny. (laughs) No, there are lots of funny things like that uh, that happen, but get it on site. So it is improving, but there still are some uh, area specific shortages. And certainly in some cases with the market changing uh, so rapidly in the last couple of months, sometimes the advice is to not do the changes and just get to the market as soon as possible and take advantage of exactly. the, the warmth still left in the market. Right, and there are some quick things that you can do that um, don't necessitate a full-fledged uh, renovation. You can um, declutter, um, I always recommend for uh, the, the first impression is your the curb appeal, your front door, um, just a caulking and touch up and paint jobs, which can be quite quick. So, in some instances, just a cleanup of the house uh, would would be helpful. And again, that's where it really helps to get someone from our team to come in and evaluate uh, what do you need to do to get the house ready, and then to have a discussion back and forth about what you want to do and how our, our staging team can help you. Uh, get to uh, a sale ready house. That's a good point. You can take advantage of staging rather than overhauling exactly. your whole house. Uh, you know, you, you only have to have it looking spick and span for the few weeks that you're on the market to maximize your value. Right. And with the change in the market, um, it was a real seller's market. So inventory was on the market for a very short period of time. And now that uh, we're seeing properties maybe stay a bit longer, it, it becomes more challenging to live in that. Um, so the, the staging and um, the changes that you want to do, you also want to stand out if there are a lot of houses that are two bedroom, uh, semi-detached in a certain neighborhood, you may want to take advantage of our staging so that your house just appear, appears more updated and refined. Awesome. 
Well, that's great. I think we covered the whole gambit. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming on, Anita. Yeah. Oh, it was my pleasure. Thank you so much, Peter. That does it for this week's Real Talk.